Good day. We are doing revisions on chapter 12 based on the question in three passive papers, section eight. So before that, we will look through a few notes uh, before we do the questions. The first is about the electrostatic force, which we learned about the Coulomb's law that define about the force. So we have the formula of force is QQ over four pi epsilon naught R squared. So to determine the direction of the force is depending on the type of charges we have. Unlike charges attract, and like charges repel. So let's look at the question in 2022. We have three charged particles, Q1, Q2, and Q3, of charges negative 10, positive 5, and negative 20 microcoulomb. So the distance is shown in the diagram. And the question is, what is the net force acting on Q2? So before we proceed to the calculation, first we need to determine the direction first. So like the case between Q1 and Q2, they are unlike charges, so there's attraction force between two of them. So for Q2, it will be to the left towards the Q1. And as for the case between Q2 and Q3, they are also unlike charges. So Q2 will be also attracted to the right. So from here, we can see there are two opposing force. First is the attraction force by the Q1, and second is the attraction force from the Q3. So when we do the calculation, first we just input all the magnitude of the charges and the distance. Okay, for example, here we can see 10 micro multiplied 5 micro divided by the square of the distance, 20 cm. Okay, remember to convert in meter. And then we can see there is a negative sign here, okay, to show that the direction is to the left. And the second one is a positive value because it is to the right. So do the calculation here and you will get negative 1.25 Newton which shows that the direction of the force is in negative x direction, answer is A. So we move on to the second question in 2022 Ulangan Pebble. So here you also have similar situations. We have three point charges, positive Q, positive 3, and negative 4 microcoulomb. So we're going to determine the resultant force acting on the charge of positive 3, which is in the middle. So the first is the case between positive 2 and positive 3. They have repulsion force. So positive 3 uh, microcoulomb charge will be pushed to the right. And as for the case between positive 3 and negative 4, there is attraction force. So positive 3 will be attracted to the right. So the, the two direction, the two forces here has the same direction. So we can see both are positive values. So with this, uh, we proceed with the calculations and we can obtain it is a 4.05 newtons and the direction is towards the right. Answer is C. So we shall move on to the second topic, which is the electric field. So E is the force per unit charge. Uh, formula is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared. So for the direction of the electric field is depending on the source charge. Either it is a positive outward direction or it is a negative charge, which is inward direction. So let's review the question in 2023. So the two point charges, positive Q and negative Q, are separated by a certain distance as shown in the diagram. If the magnitude of the positive Q is greater than the negative Q, which position the electric field strength from these two charges may be zero. So by this, we need to analyze each of the position given W, X, Y, and Z. So first we start with X because it's, uh, it's easy. So we can see the electric field from the positive charge, okay, it is in outward direction, so it is away from the positive Q. And for the negative Q, it will be inward okay, towards the negative charge. So by this, uh, we will do the vector addition. So it is certainly not a zero electric field. So what we have is the res resultant is uh, around in this direction. So for the position Y, it is quite also straightforward. So positive Q will be away. Okay, so it is to the, to the right. And negative Q will be inward towards the negative charge. So we have both the electric field towards the right. So result resulting electric field at position Y is here, so it would not be zero. So now we're going to analyze another position, let's say W. So here I've labeled a few parameters here. So the distance between W and the negative charge Q, okay, so let's say it is a uh, big R because the uh, distance is larger. And as for the distance between the W and the positive Q will be labeled as small r. So from here, you also can analyze the electric field. So by the positive charge, you will be away from it. So it is to the left. And for the negative charge, it will be towards the negative charge. It is to the right. 
So here we can see there are two opposing E. So here is the resultant electric field. So if we want to determine whether the electric field will be become zero or not, it depends on the, the small Q divided by R squared minus the big Q divided by the small R squared. So if we look at the ratio here, okay, if we want to make it zero, both of them must be equal. And if you look at the small Q divided by the big Q, okay, the ratio of these two variables, compared to the ratio of the big R square divided by R square, it would not be possible because uh, the ratio is uh, in is in opposite. Okay, The small value divided by the big value equal to the big value divided by the small value. So it is not possible. So now we're going to move on to the last point, which is a point Z. So here is also a similar case compared to W, except that now uh, uh, the electric field by the positive Q is to the right, okay, away from the positive charge. And as for the negative field, it will be towards, so it is to the left. So the R is also labeled according to the scale of the distance. Okay, the larger distance is labeled as big R, and the small R for the small uh, shorter distance. So electric resultant electric field at point Z is here. So we can see the big Q over R squared minus a small Q over R squared. And if you want to make, uh, want to find a point where it is zero, so this is the uh, the both terms must be equal. And if you look at the ratio, it is now much more logical. Okay, we can see the big value divided by, divided by the small value equal to the big divided by the small value. So if you still not understand about this question, let me show you another questions, similar questions as in the year of 2021, question 16. So here we have two point charges, negative 30 and positive 60 microcoulomb, separated by a distance of 14 centimeters. So I have discussed this question in one of my video and the solution is not correct. So here I would like to do, uh, I would like to re-explain again this question where we have all those values given and we can do a simple calculation to obtain the possible position where the resulting electric field is zero. So by this, we're going to do a similar things that we've done in the previous question. So we shall analyze first on the position at the right side. So here, the distance between the negative, negative 30 microcoulomb and the, this point, okay, let it be R plus 14, okay, where R is the distance between here, okay, plus the 14 centimeter, which is the distance between these two charges. Okay, so I hope the label here would not be confuse you. So here, we're going to analyze again the direction of the electric field. So the electric field by the negative charge will be towards the negative charge, so it is to the left. And by the positive charge, it will be away, so it is to the right. So the resulting electric field is expressed here. Okay? And if you analyze the equation here, okay, the 60 over R squared minus 30 over R plus 40 squared, if you want to have a zero resultant electric field, both these terms must be equal, but it is not possible. Okay, If you do the calculation, it will be a max error condition. So now we're going to analyze the position on the left. So we do the same things as just now. So except that we can see the electric field is also interchange okay, because uh, it depends on the type of the charge. So here is the expression of the resultant electric field at that point. And if we want to have zero resultant electric field, let the 30 plus R squared equal to the 60 over square of R plus 14. And this equation is solvable and you can try to do it on your own, and the R is 33.8 centimeter. So it is where the 33.8 centimeter of the, on the left of the negative charge, where we can have the zero resultant electric field. So now we shall proceed to the third topic in this chapter, which is about the Gauss slope. So it is given as the phi equal to EA, and it is uh, defined as the total charge divided by the permittivity. So we learn how to derive the electric field using Gauss law for a point charge, conducting sphere, and the charge plane. So I won't go through again, and you can do it. Uh, you can do your own revision. So this is the graph of the electric field for these three different cases. So the things that I want to highlight is the case between the point charge and the conducting sphere. So for conducting sphere, it is a little bit special because uh, we don't have electric field inside the sphere. Okay, this is uh, the key things that you need to remind yourself. And it only applies on the conducting sphere. So we have zero E okay, uh, inside the R, which is less than uh, the distance, less than the radius of the sphere. And as for the point charge, the electric field is will go to the EVT when it go near, goes near to the point charge. 
And as for the charge plate, the E is constant, where we have the Q over 2, epsilon naught A. And the charge plate is usually will be discussed again in the case of capacitors, where you know that the capacitor is made of two parallel plates. So we don't discuss further here, so let's move on to the question in 2022. So this is a straightforward question, where we have a point P at a distant R from isolated charge thin metal plate of area A. So if the plate charge carries charge of positive Q, what is the electric field strength E at P? So this is a plate charge as we discussed, and the answer is C, okay, which is uh, what we have done in the syllabus. So we shall move on to the question in 2023. A cubic container contains three charges, positive one, positive four, and negative three Q. What is the total electric flux that passes through the wall of the container? So here we apply the Gauss law where the electric flux is the total charge divided by the permittivity. So here we need to consider whether it is a positive or negative. So we have Q plus 4Q minus 3Q. So the answer is B, 2Q over epsilon naught. And then we shall move on to the last topic in this chapter, which is the electric potential and the potential energy. So electric potential energy is also the work done where it is uh, expressed as the integral of uh, F dr. So here F is the electrostatic force. Integral of F is QQ over 4 pi epsilon naught R. And as for V, it is the work done per unit charge. So the formula is Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R. So another thing I like in this topic is that uh, we have the relationship between the E and V, which is either the differentiation or the integral. So the gradient of the graph Vx, okay, the gradient of the graph Vx is the E, and the area under the graph of E dr, okay, ER is the electric potential, or also the work done per unit charge. So here the above, uh, the top three graph is uh, what you have seen just now uh, from the Gauss law. And, and then I shall provide another three graph here for your reference, which is the electric potential. So it is the area under the graph of uh, ER. So here I want to highlight is about the conducting sphere. So because we don't have electric field inside the sphere, okay, so it can be said that there is no work done okay, to move a point charge from the surface of the sphere to the inner of the sphere. And then another thing is about the plate charge. So maybe you have seen this graph before. So it should be a straight line graph because the E is a constant. So the gradient of the graph VR is a straight line. So now we shall move on to the question in 2022 Ulangan Pebble. Electric field strength, electric potential on the surface of the charged solid metal are E0 and V respectively. What Which relationship is true about the E and V at the point inside the sphere? So as we discussed, there is no electric field inside the sphere and the V is constant okay, because there is no more work done to move the point charge from the surface to the inner or the inside the sphere. So answer will be B. So that's all for the passive discussion on chapter 12. There could be more things to be discussed, but I will leave it for you to do your own revision. Thank you.